Hello, happy 4th of July weekend. I hope you're all having a blast. Hopefully you're not watching this till much later after because you're having so much fun. And many of you or all of you have tomorrow off. I shouldn't say all. Our essential workers are working, I'm sure. And I hope you're celebrating this country and everything it brings to us with our freedom. Okay. I'm gonna pull the cards first today. The first one is Mystical Wisdom card deck. So I'll let you see what that is. Beautiful pictures. So let's see what this first week of July is bringing us. I feel like I wanna pull three of these. They're so beautiful. I'm gonna do something a little bit different this time. I think I'm gonna pull them all. This is from Divine Animal Oracle from Stacy DeMarco. Be patient with me, please. Decided to do it a little bit of a different way. I'm only gonna pull one card from this deck. All right. 13 Moon Oracle deck. And by Ariel Spilsbury. One from here. All right. Nice. All right. Sorry, my Virgo has to get a little organized here. Put the rest of the cards in the deck in the box. doing The Blessed Bee by Lucy Cavendish. Sorry if I'm butchering her name. Got these in England. A few of you people have them out there. My friend Anne and I know also my friend Kim has them. Work Your Light Oracle by Rebecca Campbell. one star seed oracle deck by rebecca campbell all of her decks are amazing as far as i'm concerned two wanted to come out of here all right Am I missing something? One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yep. Okay. So just looking at um, the ones from the Mystical Wisdom deck, beautiful unicorn. And it says on it, invite serendipity so to me we're starting the week off fine with a little weekend off hopefully and this is the unicorn and when i look at the unicorn i always think of 
mystical, childlike things. So as I'm looking at this card, to me, what this means is that this week, we have to just be present for the magic that's always around us. You know, so many times we just don't get it. We just don't realize that there's magic happening always around us. And all we have to do is wait for the opportunity and notice it and say, thank you, universe, because we want more of that. And this is really like trusting the universe. She's lying on the unicorn and just trusting the universe to, universe, <laughs> unicorn to take her where she wants to go. She's surrendering, total surrender. So that's what that feels like to me. Of course, the book might say something completely different, but that's what it is for me. Okay, it says, mysterious, playful, and pure. The unicorn is universally beautiful, mysterious, and difficult to capture at any time. It is fierce and protective yet admirable. The unicorn is the symbol of serendipity, the occurrence of events by chance in a magical, there it is, happy or beneficial way. This card represents good luck in making unexpected and favorable discoveries. Expect magic to happen, luck is on your side. There it is, twice when I said magic, that word came out twice. Mantras, I accept and invite serendipity into my life. So we love that. It's just like um, that, those opportunities coming out of the blue that we love. Next one is dreams. Believe in your dreams. As I look at this, I see so many different things. Of course, on the card, she's asleep. And then up in the right-hand corner are butterflies and dragonflies, which have people lying down. So to me, this is like going into another dimension, perhaps with your loved ones or whatever, and you know, having those interconnectedness. And it's interesting because this is all about, you know, sometimes you're having a dream, sometimes you know it's more than a dream and you're just in that space, and that's what I'm seeing here. So she's dreaming, but is she, or is she visiting somewhere else? That's what I wanna say about that. So dreams. Believe in yourself and reach for the stars. You have the courage, patience, and passion within you to make a difference. When you have a dream, only you can have the responsibility to make it real. Dreams are never free. It may take time, energy, and sacrifice to create the reality and live your dreams. It also takes preparation, determination, and effort. Never compromise or surrender your dreams. Believe in yourself. Believe in your dreams. Mantra, I believe in following my dreams. Now that's interesting. I went a whole different way. They were talking about the dreams you want to manifest in your life. And I was talking about dreaming. So interesting. And this is a great example of, you know, we could have five of us together and each one of us may get a different symbolism or may tune into something on the card that's completely different than what everybody else had. Archangel Gabriel, messenger of creativity and hope. Look at the children gathered around Gabriel. So many. And she is just beautiful. So Gabriel's the messenger. And I think she's bringing hope to all these children. They're gathered around her. And she's saying, it's okay. I'm the messenger. And I'm bringing some good messages to you. All right. We'll see what they say. He speaks, oh, it says he, it looks like a female on the card. He speaks to you through your heart and soul. Gabriel, which means God is my strength, guides hopeful parents in fertility and child conceptions, giving them courage and strength. He is the angel of communication and the arts, inspiring and motivating you in your creative pursuits. He, His presence offers enthusiasm 
and encouragement in the creative fields. He guides artists, authors, musicians, and dancers to reach their full potential and live their purpose. If you work with children, personally or professionally, you will find Gabriel by your side with loving guidance and support. Mantra, I follow the guidance of my heart. Very nice. Okay. The next card is Elephant, and it's a beautiful Ganesh looking elephant with, um, which is the Hindu God, removing obstacles and look at all the beautiful flowers and how much he's adorned. All right, let's see what Elephant has to say. Oh, it's one of those books that they're all over the place. Let me just find it. So when I look at this, I mean, I just see, to me, it reminds me of, um, the elephant here is so beautiful. He takes his rightful place. He's in front of what I would imagine a group to be. And they brought him these beautiful flowers as they have adorned him. Okay, leadership. There is a time to step forward and lead, and it is now. Be the leader in your own life. If you want something achieved, take the lead yourself. Be the examples that others will follow. Do not lead by force, but instead by inspiration. And, we, and also, we all know that he removes your obstacles. So important. Okay, next one, the goddess of love. I feel I respond and I beautify. Unconditional love, intimacy, self-love, relationship, ripeness, and open-heartedness. Goddess of love. Just beautiful. All right, what do they do with that? There it is, I'm sitting on it, okay. Goddess of love. All right, it says, the presence of the goddess of love in your reading asks you to open up to more love in your life by expanding your definition of love. No matter where you are on the continuum of blooming the tight bud of unconditional, oh sorry, of conditional love, congratulate yourself because re re receiving this card indicates that you are moving towards unconditional love and how you approach your life and relationships. The archetype counsels you not to wait for the final flowering. Break out the pink champagne and roses to celebrate the beauty of the journey. I think so many times we forget that. We're just focused on the end goal. And here we are. Beautiful journey. It be sensitive to opportunities to transmute the eroding emotions of compassion and competition with self-love by following them to their root in fear of hurt or loss. If you experience anxiety around mirrors, take time to explore the source of the distortion that has you feeling imperfect. Well, isn't that true? And what else I feel with this, you know how sometimes people think that, um, you know, if they hold on tight to a relationship, then that's love or jealousy is a sign of love. No, it's the opposite. Because if we trust, if we trust in the love, we know that's enough and we don't have to control somebody. And even if we did, 
It's not going to hold somebody there in a relationship with you. No matter if you tied them down with a rope, <laughs> they're not going to stay. We have to trust the process of giving them freedom and moving on with that. So it says, the goddess of love is requesting your unique responses to sensate beauty. Go deeper, be vulnerable, share open-heartedly with loved ones. Receiving this card invites you to create more intimacy in your life by being more present in relationships without expectations. Being in full presence turns up the volume on love and gives intimacy room to thrive. Is there something or someone in your life that is right for your expression of unconditional love? Contemplate what or whom might be and act on it. So it's about the sensory, right? We want to feel it. We want to touch it. We want to taste it, all of it. But, you know, to me, there's no difference with the kinds of, you know, people want to separate love. Well, love with my beloved or love with my mom or love with a child. The pure essence of love is the same. You find yourself being loving with an elder or loving with a child or loving that just comes from the heart. It's not like, oh, how I have to separate everything. It is just the energy that comes from love when it's pure. It's no different. Okay, now we're moving on to blessed be, a blessing for a fresh start. Who couldn't use a fresh start? Isn't that beautiful? Oh great, this actually has a number on it. I love it when they have numbers. A blessing for when we must begin a part or even a great deal of our lives anew. A blessing upon you as you strike out from the familiar place, which for all its troubles was the place you once knew. May the uncertainty which surrounds you and the fear of what may come be quelled as you bravely take those first steps and begin to create the new life which was always yours, for destiny would have made this so. May you find comfort in the, in the ease with which you find yourself embracing the new, and may the loneliness you've encountered become more akin to solitude, a time of re-knowing your own self as the world no longer can tell you who you are over and over again. May the breaking free of what you tethered, you renew your strength. And as you tremble from time to time, wondering if you ought to have stayed within the cage, know you are being watched over and encouraged by the divine ones who wish you all the blessings of the world. May you embrace the differences, adapt and explore who you are, and know that when you give yourself this great chance, you offered yourself the great gift of recreation, of the transformation of self, of the realization of your own personal truth. May the fresh start be a blessing to you and give you the knowledge, the certain unquestionable faith that you can break free of winter. Because remember, winter, we're going within, trying to rest, think about things, and then springtime, we come through with our creations and move forward. So this is all about a new fresh start. And as I look at the card, it's this beautiful pagan woman with a broom and a crow to her side and some beautiful goddess glyphs on the stone. And she's looking forward to this. She's got her animal companion here and she's looking forward to it. She's got her broom to clear away things and she's just ready to move, move through everything. So this feels good. And again, we're now in summer so we're moving through things in the way that we would like to. You know, it's like time for a fresh start. What, what do we leave behind in winter? What do we bring to fruition? fruition? What seeds have been planted that are coming forward? Okay. Align your life. What is not aligned or needs to change? Kind of goes with the previous one. And as I look at this card, she's got these shards of herself that are all 
individually broken off. It almost looks like aspects of herself and the old aspects versus the new. And so she's trying to see, you know, how can I bless this part of my life, let it go and bring in a new undiscovered part. So it kind of goes with the last card. All right. What in your life is no longer in alignment with who you truly are? We are cyclic beings in a constant state of change or evolution of growth. Change is one of the only certainties in life. When you resist your cyclical nature, you resist life and feel stuck. Isn't that the truth? We're always going to be growing. Either we're fighting it or we're going with it. Many of us have learned to be who the world wants us to be. But there comes a time when it is harder to hold on to the facade than it is to embrace who we truly are. To surrender to how we have changed and align life to that way of blessing. If you've pulled this card, you are being called to let go of who you once were or the things that you once defined yourself by. The job, the relationship, the mask you wore and to embrace who you truly are now to courageously step into the person that you came here to be in full authenticity, to embrace your weirdness and your uniqueness. Perhaps you have outgrown some relationship or circumstance and it's time to reassess, bring all the parts of your life into alignment so that they are congruent with who you truly are today. And the, the question is, what in your life is not aligned or needs to change? And then we have two from the last deck here, Star Seed, Activated Earth, Power Places, Ley Lines, Trust Where You're Led. I totally believe in this. I'll just remind you what it looked like. Different portals, different sacred sites on the earth. And, you know, myself included, I've been bitching up a storm that I haven't been able to travel since all of this, or I chose not to. And so we have to remember that everything is a sacred site. It's important to know that. And so that's what I'm seeing here, that wherever we go, I was in New York not too long ago, and certainly that city needs healing, and every step I was taking on the sidewalks or wherever I was on the train, that energy comes with us. We're blessing it all of it, and it's activating to everybody you work with, that you're touching, whatever. So that's what that's reminding me, is that even where you are at home is a sacred space. Okay, let me just find this. Okay. Ley lines are invisible pathways on the land along which energy travels. They can be sensed when we tune into them with our subtle senses, also known as spirit paths. paths. Um, they've been compared to the meridian system's body used in Chinese medicine, and they link sacred sites, stone circles, burial mounds, and places of worship worldwide. Okay, it says, many believe that as we visit such sacred portals on earth, something is activated within us. Some also believe that by connecting with the land, with the with devotion at the sacred places, something is activated within the planet, too. I believe both of those. I absolutely do. Um, are you being called to travel to a sacred place that your soul remembers or 
to tend to the land you live on, to honor and acknowledge the known and unknown keepers or nature spirits of the land. As you connect with the earth and honor its keepers, the land opens up more fully to hold you. The fruits provide more nourishment and the guardians watch over you. So that's a good one. And then the last one is perspective. None of this matters. Zoom out, common ground. Void. That's what it reminds me of when I look at it. The void, which is there's nothing and everything in the void. That's what it's reminding me. Take a step back and look at the bigger picture of your life. Step away from the blinkened, hmm, blinkened vision and reactive frame of mind of me against them. Change your perspective, shift your point of view, and zoom out, out, out. We are but a speck of dust in the universe, yet we think everything revolves around us. Isn't that the truth? We see the planet as ours to own and conquer, pillaging the land and setting ourselves up for our eventual extinction. We build focus and wait and create invisible borders. Mother Earth doesn't need us to survive, but we need her. It's time to wake up. A new perspective is urgently needed. We become so lost in our individual experience that, that we don't realize that most of the things that keep us awake at night are actually distractions. We've wasted our precious time and resources fighting each other when we should be coming together to heal this earth. Amen to that. This moment is a breath in the timeline of your life. This life is a fleeting moment in the tapestry of your soul's experience. Your soul's experience is a flash in the timeline of the unknown, sorry, of the known universe. And the known universe is a grain of sand in the unknown universe. Take a moment to see the bigger picture, to find common ground, to find deep compassion in your heart, to gain a greater perspective of humanity in the fleeting moment, in the timeline of your soul's existence, in the timeline of all that is, was, and ever will be. And your question is, how are you being called to change your perspective? Wow, what a powerful week. And I love the repeated messages. You know, we're to look at our dreams. We're to have serendipity. We're to have hope with Archangel Gabriel and lead our own life, not anybody else's, but lead our own through the eyes of love and through the heartfeltness of love, which will give us the fresh start. And we're going to align our life with where we want to be now or shortly in the future. And as we do this, we're activating ourself and the Earth Mother, and we have to accept responsibility for all that we've done to add to this mess on this planet and to look at a higher perspective that things can actually heal. So it sounds like a powerful light, uh, powerful week, sorry, powerful week. And I know we have tomorrow off and so it's going to be a shorter week but it sounds like a powerful one so get back to your goals and dreams look at what you want what you've outgrown what you've changed your mind on and where you're going now lots of love to you bye-bye